Shiny badges don't grant extra rights. Two and 53 are related and be my recommendation that they be heard and considered together. And with your permission, I'd like to move forward and read both items into the record. I have a question. Uh, could I get a 52 is to conduct a public hearing, approve it, opt, and authorize the chairman to sign an ordinance to amend Title IV, Chapter 4.18 of Clark County Code to increase the rate of sales and use tax imposed for the purpose of employing and equipping more police officers in Clark County. It's authorized by Chapter 249 of the 2005 Nevada Legislature as amended by SB 1 of the 2013 Special Session of the Nevada Legislature and providing for other matters properly related thereto. Item 53, the recommendation reads the exact same way as a point of distinction. Item 52 proposes to increase the sales tax by 0.15, whereas item 53 proposes to increase the sales tax by 0.075. Ms. Miller, we are going to hail both public hearings at the same time. Is that an issue? Is that the call of the chairman? Okay. At this time, I will open up the public hearing as it relates to items number 52 and 53. Anyone wishing to address the board, please step forward. Identify yourself for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes. My name is Melissa Letourneau. Um, that's L-E-T-O-U-R-N-E-A-U. And... I think that we need to start this off by just clarifying the fact that this is not the people versus Metro. This is Metro and the people versus a board of seven people who are playing God with our lives and our money. The sheriff himself just said, okay, that it is to, is this going to reduce the responsibility of this county to fund the Metro deficit? Okay, that means that you have a responsibility to fund this. And if I can show you right here. Okay. You will see that culture and recreation has taken a 4.8 jump from the previous budgetary year. Why do we need 175 more dollars, 175 million more dollars towards culture and recreation when you could be funding our police department if they legitimately need it? Okay. Secondly, if you really wanted to save money with Metro, this is the traffic line item for Metro. It's $26 million. It is the highest line item in their entire budget. Okay? Metro, if we were to reevaluate what we expect of these police officers, maybe we could save money. Maybe we could put these police officers so that they are not at odds with us. Why should we be under the thumb of laws that bodies like this and the, and the legislature have created that, that, that penalize victimless crimes? You can't, it, it, it's like, Preventative crime. It's, it's the notion that pre-crime, we can just, you know, think that someone might hurt somebody. We're taking personal responsibility completely out of the equation when we do this. John Dunphy, the police department is going through extensive training now. Where was the training in the past? It should have happened a long time ago. Where is the leadership in the, in the, in the police department? On yesterday's paper said they had $137 million in reserve. Most people have little or none. Honest words need to be spoken. Every board commissioners, board and commission wants more money for services. How many boards and commissions are, there, are you people on? The players are being squeezed. Money is tight. Stronger leadership is needed. County commissioners must listen to the people. Voters need to make changes. The key word is money in hand. More money for police department is unacceptable. They have $137 million reserved. What have you got, folks? Where is the justice in the county? Cecil Becker, I just would like to say I'm absolutely opposed to this tax. We, uh, as citizens, are just pushed to the limit as it is. We pay over 50 cents a gallon on tax as it is. Uh, and just to use a couple of the sheriff's comments, uh, um, he said the number of officers has decreased. Well, so has the number of officer-involved shootings. Uh, they pay out hundreds of millions of dollars and seem unwilling or unable to uh, reprimand their officers. We have the, the district attorney. I don't know where he, at, where he is. He hides behind his desk and doesn't uh, respond to any of my emails. There is no accountability. In the, in, in if you wear a badge, you can do whatever you want. Uh, sure, you might have to pay out a couple of millions of dollars in wrongful death lawsuits, but that doesn't come out of your pocket. We pay that. They refuse. 
Denver has a police force that's twice as large as ours, and they have half as many shootings as we do. What's our problem here? Why, you know, if they don't, if they're so scared, find a new job. If, uh, you know, if, if, if they fear that, you know, if, if their first response is to shoot somebody because they grab a hat or whatever the, the situation is, that's, that's ridiculous. And I don't feel like we need to fund that. There's no accountability and, uh, they just get away with whatever they want. They're, they're bullies with badges. And it's ridiculous. I don't think that we, they need any more of our money. They have a surplus, spend it. Uh, they just got a pay raise, actually. They just got a, a mediator just voted them a pay raise. I make $12 an hour. I'm sure they make more than I do. And is my job dangerous? Yeah, sometimes I'm up on roofs. Sometimes they're steep. And I'm helping people out, serving the community. I don't you know, feel like I need to pay any more money for them. Uh, Steve Sanson, President of Veterans and Politics International. Um, you know, when, when we look at the uh, Metropolitan Police Department, especially our leaders, uh, we want to think of uh, three things, and uh, it's transparency, integrity, and uh, fiscal responsibility. And Sheriff Doug Gillespie has uh, made uh, several comments about there's uh, 426 vacancies that needs to be filled within Metro. But uh, what he failed to tell you is that some of these vacancies were eliminated and some of these vacancies were never filled by officers. When I came here the last time and I spoke, um, I also made a comment of who visited Metro headquarters over there, Martin Luther King and, uh, and Alta. And only one county commissioner uh, raised her hand and said that she went over there because I wanted to show you guys the uh, wasteful spending that, 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 uh, that uh, Metro has put into this building at $1.2 million per month in rent so you guys could have an understanding about the lack of fiscal responsibility. Um, the radio, I brought up the radio, $42 million that uh, the sheriff signed off for this radio communication that apparently doesn't work, caused the death of a uh, Gulf War vet Stanley Gibson allegedly. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there's countless others, other situations out there that uh, we haven't heard about, but yet, his time to sue this radio communication, I believe it was Dare to Sky, has been so gone, he can't even go back and sue them for that radio communication problem. $134 million the sheriff has in his reserve program from the last time uh, the tax initiative went into effect. And I remember he was at the legislators and he was working on their, their heartstrings, letting them know that, hey, you know, if you don't put these cops on the street, crime is going to go up. And, and, and safety is a factor, the rank and file is a factor. But you know what, if I was sheriff of Metropolitan Police Department and I had $134 million, I'll go hire me more cops without going in front of any board if I could do that. If I was so worried about crime in, in the streets of uh, Clark County. Now, the sheriff also mentioned about these body cameras. And if you take a look at this, th this letter, that was written in May of 2013 from the undersheriff, Jim Dixon, talking about these body cameras and how they're going to use a, a pilot program at two, uh, two substations to get these body cameras out, okay? And that was part of passing this, uh, this more cops bill. But then you take a look at this letter from the PPA. It shows that Sheriff Doug Gillespie made a deal with the PPA saying that the officers the officers hired after July of 2013 don't have to wear these body I'm cameras. I'm wrap it up, Mr. Sanso. You know something? The, the, the integrity that goes, on, that goes with, with, the, with the sheriff of Metro has to be taken a really good look at. I don't know if you guys take a look at the collective bargaining contract. Mr. Sanso, i got to ask you to wrap it up. I, I'm going to wrap it up, uh, Mr. Chairman. But if you take a look at the collective bargaining contract, they give six months of maternity leave for officers. And if you take a look at the, the collective bargaining contract, okay. they, pur they purge I gotta, records. I got to cut you off now because I've got 50 other people to speak. Last time I was here, um, we, uh, I spoke against this, and I'm asking you again to please vote against another tax. Today's October 1st, 2013, when our Affordable ha uh, Care Act goes into effect. You raised the fuel tax last couple of weeks ago. We're being taxed to death. Metro spent $42 million on a communication system that doesn't work. 100 cops are not going to make us safer. 
We exercise our Second Amendment privileges and rights, our God-given right to self-defense. We're all going to be much safer. A hundred cops are not going to keep us safe. I'm going to quote another founding father, Ben Franklin, said, those who would give up essential liberty for a little bit of safety deserve neither liberty or safety. 100 new police officers are not going to keep us safe. We're all going to keep each other safe. This is an open carry state. We need to exercise our Second Amendment rights, and we need to audit the Metropolitan Police Department before taxing another Clark County resident another penny. Thank you. This, this is totally ridiculous. Our sales tax is too high as it is already. All right? Our sales tax needs to be lowered, not raised. The way you prevent crime is to have a strong economy, not tax the people to death so that the economy flounders and then you increase crime that way. A hundred police officers is not going to decrease crime. What's going to decrease crime is to do things that gives us a strong economy. Any tax increase goes against that. So I would urge you, all of you, to vote against this. And I would like you to also think about how we can decrease the sales tax, because that has a big, fact, a big effect on our economy. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Um, as you guys know, I was here for the fuel tax. I am not a big fan of taxing citizens. We still have the highest foreclosure rate in the country, unfortunately. Um, one thing that I wanted to make a point that kind of piggybacks on what other people have said already, what I found very interesting when I was looking through uh, Metro's budgets, is uh, the liability insurance. Um, we have already paid out this year alone almost $2 million in retribution for lawsuits. And that comes from the taxpayers. In the last four years, since 2008, $6.5 million have been spent in retributions for lawsuits against the Metropolitan Police Department. And um, I find it interesting that in the last couple of years, the budget for liability insurance has been around $1 million, and the requested amount for the 2013 fiscal year is almost $7 million for liability insurance. Now, um, I'm not trying to generalize. I have friends on the force. Uh, I think that our police force does the best it is can. And unfortunately, though, are, there are bad apples that kind of paint in the public eye um, a picture that uh, has left people feeling uh, not too warm and fuzzy about our police department, unfortunately. Um, I would feel more comfortable before Metropolitan Police Department asked for any more money from the taxpayers if they were making steps and to address these issues, why are we having these incidents where the taxpayers are bailing out for, for lawsuits? But unfortunately, as we, we all know, in August, the use of force board completely resigned. That's not a sign of faith that we're moving in the right direction for accountability with our police force. Um, the assistant sheriff was on that and he resigned. So that was my one concern, that number, an increase of 436% um, for liability insurance really stood out to me and I just wanted to make that point for everybody. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Shirley Shelton. I just wanted to ask you, how many taxes have you increased this year and who's paying those? Because we're losing. The more taxes we pay, the less jobs there are. The less jobs there are, the more the crime is. It's two plus two. You just need to do your homework and you need to have the audit so that we can really analyze this properly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Heath. Hi, good morning. My name is Tasha Heath. Um, they, as Andy Matthews from NPRI stated, the employees of Las Vegas Metro continue to be some of the highest compensated employees, public or private, in Las Vegas. Valley. Um, I have a few questions that I'd like you guys to ask Gillespie, if you could. Um, where is the fiscal audit we asked for? Should people have to pay more to Metro because they can't budget? Why are they getting an option to wear cameras? Um, where is um, the budget plan? How do we know for a fact that he will be using this for more police? Um, how much will Metro be getting from the internet sales tax? We need better training and better budgeting before we give any more of our money to Metro. Uh, 
They need to learn to work within their budget, stop shooting first and asking questions later, stop making deals with friends for faulty equipment. All these things need to be addressed before we give them more money. Shiny badges don't grant extra rights. You guys, we need to be listening to the people about the taxes. You guys have raised taxes how many times in just the past couple of months? I suggest you don't do it again right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Kelly W. Patterson. And uh, personally, I haven't seen any evidence that there's a shortage of cops. Um, they had enough cops to conduct a two-month investigation of some people riding on, side, on sidewalks with chalk. Um, they have enough cops that they can shut down Fremont Street every first Friday and set up what looks like an East German checkpoint to make sure that somebody doesn't carry a beer from one bar to the next. They have enough cops to have undercover cops going up and down uh, the strip to make sure that somebody isn't selling water because they're competing with casinos, because the casinos sell the water for more money. This isn't a matter of them not having enough money. It's a matter of priorities. They found enough money to take some second-rate guitar player that hardly anybody ever heard of out for a helicopter ride because he wanted to, um, he wanted to propose to his girlfriend. They found the money to build that giant headquarters in the middle of the worst recession in history. The, uh, the elephant is in the room, that's always in the room, because there's no, no evidence of it whatsoever. In fact, there is no, there's evidence that has never happened, is accountability. There's no accountability whatsoever with Metro or with any Las Vegas Police Department. They, they're paying cops to sit home on vacation after they murder somebody. Jesus Arvalo has been home for almost two years now after he murdered Stanley Gibson. There's nothing, absolutely nothing whatsoever that should, that should justify shooting somebody. And yet the, in the history, in the 40-year history of Metro, not one single cop has ever been brought up on charges for shooting somebody, even if that person's been unarmed and completely innocent. The entire 40-year history of Metro, not one single person. The fact that it was, it was called unprecedented when the Use of Force Board recommended that somebody be fired for shooting somebody because they thought his hat was a gun is disgraceful. The fact that Sheriff Gillespie over here refused that recommendation is beyond disrespectful. It's an insult to this community. There's, there's, they're paying out millions of dollars to people who have been either murdered or brutalized by the police. And I'm, I see people within my own community where the police are stopping them because they don't have a, a bell on their bicycle or their headlight on their bicycle isn't bright enough because they're looking for any excuse they can to stop people in certain neighborhoods. We've got all these police running around just harassing people, and yet we're told we need more police. There's certain neighborhoods here where they take these saturation teams and they go through, and it's actually part of the stated purpose of the saturation teams that they are going to stop anybody they can for any reason. I've got to ask you to wrap it up, Mr. Peterson. Okay. Well, they need to, instead of coming here and asking us for more money to, to uh, offset their budget that they're wasting, they need to learn how to actually have a budget Thank and you. how to actually prioritize what they're doing instead of being out there harassing everybody and then saying, hey, give us more Thank of your money so we can harass Thank you. you more. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. My name is Lisa Mayo. First thing I wanted to say, um, is I hope that everybody watching and all 120,000 of your constituents in your district realize that Chris Collins, who is up here basically lobbying against, I think, citizens in many ways, is paid for by you, the taxpayer. You pay his salary and those of his eight officers. So I think people should realize that when people come up and, and say that. I'm actually here today um, on behalf of many of the Oh, officer involved shooting families, Eric Scott, Ralphie Olivas, Tanner Chamberlain, and South Lee Ketmany, um, all victims of officer involved shootings. The most recent was July 23rd, 2013, when Mr. Ketmany, a 35 year old father of two young children, was and a Vegas tourist, was shot and killed by Metro officers. If video was available in all of these officer involved shootings, going back to Eric Scott and all the others, the truth would be much easier for families to find as they looked for answers. Um, I testified 
to the legislature on May 22nd, 2013 in support of the more tax cops. I was there to support this tax. So long as mandatory body cameras were part of the more cops tax increase and would be considered required equipment. Why body cameras? Because studies coupled with actual police department results show that body cameras improve the public trust and result in fewer complaints against police departments. They are a win-win for both the public and the police. In a May Senate committee hearing, Senator Reuben Kewen asked for a letter from Metro ensuring body cameras for all officers. I believe that we've put this up before, but I'll put it up again. Uh, this letter stated, Here's the letter, and I was so encouraged that the sheriff and Metro were in favor of body cameras. They had been working with the NAACP, the ACLU, and other work groups on body cameras. The letter was very encouraging, and the letter promises in the last sentence to maintain our communication with the public. I consider myself a part of that public because I was testifying at the legislature. Then I found out that a letter dated July 15, 2013 from the PPA was sent to all Metro officers bragging the PPA convinced Metro to make the wearing of body cameras voluntary for all officers except those hired after July 30, 2013, which amounts to about 30 officers of the 600 officers they have. There was not a press release. There was no public communication as promised. I and the NAACP and others had to find out about the letter on our own with no direct communication from Metro. This is a breach of public and political trust. If all officers are not wearing body cameras and only a few rookie cops are forced to wear them, this will erode the already poor culture that exists in our police department. Good police work is based on strong teamwork, good communication, and a common bond to protect one another. I'm almost done. One officer with a body camera and others who, who do not wear a body camera will result in morale issues and most certainly legal issues down the road. Because of this breach of trust and lack of transparency related to body cameras, I urge you to not vote for the more tax today. People will not remember public safety in your elections. They will remember transparency, and openness, and honesty. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Barnes, Las Vegas resident. I do support law enforcement, but what I'm against, I got a ticket from an officer. It's badge number 8727 here. I told him I was coming. His name, last name Jackson. Badge number 8727, Officer Jackson. I told him I was coming to this meeting. What happened, he wrote me the ticket, right? I've been trying to get an appointment with Sheriff Gillespie. The last two meetings he was at the county commission meeting, he told me to call the secretary and make an appointment. Every time I call, the secretary will not give me an appointment. So what I felt the need to do was go back out by the freeway with my sign that says, please help. Anybody that'll tell the truth or let me on Nellis, please help. He comes along on his motorbike. Other officers had passed me by because they know of this situation. Of course, they don't want to be embarrassed. But he comes by, and he's bold, and I'm telling him, well, I've been trying to get an appointment with Sheriff Gillespie to sell this thing and get some information on how I can get some results because I'm robbed without a gun day and night in this city. I'm lied on. I'm sickly. I get lied on in my doctor's office. My doctor is frustrated. I'm the only patient he got that he can't get the truth on. And I don't want doctors operating on me and messing my health up off lies that people that are stealing money from me what they call stipend, and it's a dignified way to rob this disabled and sickly people. And I've asked them to remove my name off their program. I had a confrontation on the way here at the bus station, and I called the police. I said, well, I'm on my way to the county commissioner's meeting to complain now. Allied bargain is no good to protect the customers. I pay the same price every other customer pay. But then, I want good officers. We don't want to hire nobody else that's not efficient. We don't, you can have a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. You have a few that know what they're doing and get the job done and believe in taking care of business, getting law and order. I've had people sell drugs over me, theme off of me, and I, I found out that an officer was even engaged in sex with a lady, a friend of mine that's doing drugs, and I, I don't need no more officers like that. I don't want no more on the force child molesting, uh, pedophiling, doing these things. We need good, qualified officers that will have a good reputation, uphold a reputation for the whole police department and the whole citizen, not just work for certain people. We need good officers. I vote for good officers, but I, I, I want Officer Jackson to know that I did come. Badge number 8727. I'm called out to city council meeting. Thank you. For the record, Gina Grison. Um, I'm here today because I'm confused. I know that this was an issue, uh, you know, last month or so, and there was a line of people, and I hope 
all of their comments will be considered because they probably couldn't come back today to talk about the more cops issue. Um, you know, I, th and I think that was one of the reasons it was postponed. There was a line out the door. They were actually stopping people from coming in that day because it was a fire hazard. Um, I, I may be mistaken, but can someone tell me if there were town halls held and things like that? I, I was told that there was going to be all these town halls and there was going to be all this discussion because there were so many unanswered questions about this Amor Cops issue. I didn't see any. I was prepared to attend. I have a lot of questions. I didn't see any town halls held. So I guess what I'm going to say today is not to vote for or against. What I'm going to say is, I don't think we're prepared. I don't think you're prepared to vote on this. I don't think the people have had all their questions answered, which the sheriff promised. And since that last meeting, the sheriff has decided not to run for re-election, and to give you know money, uh, you know basically to a sheriff that is no longer accountable to the people because he's choosing not to run again. Um, and I'm not saying I don't trust him. I'm just saying there's so many issues within Metro. And I heard a speaker before me say, this is about the more cops. This isn't about shootings or helicopter rides. No, this is exactly what this is about. Because when we were here, when all the officer-involved shootings were occurring, the only way that we can actually get the attention of Metro is through purse strings. And everyone in this room knows that. We can only get that attention. When we passed all those coroner's inquest reforms, it was because everyone was running for election, everyone was on their best behavior, and as soon as the elections were over and this board got back together again last January, they, they reversed all of the hard work that we had done. So this is, you know, when it comes to money, that's the only time you can get people's attention to do the right thing. I, t I heard the sheriff earlier talk about, we, we brought the shootings down, we did this. We did. Why were the shootings ever up? Why were they ever up? Why were we shooting citizens that shouldn't, unarmed citizens? Why was that happening in the first place? We should have, I mean, that was like when my daughter said, but mom, I brought my grades up. Well, you know what? They never should have dropped in the first place. So I'm just here to say, I don't think the questions have been answered yet. I think obviously there's been a long line of people here that have a lot of questions. There's still a lot of concerns. And now with all due respect to the sheriff, because I think he's a nice man, we have a lame duck sheriff. Okay, and I, and I don't think that we should be giving the money now. I think we should wait. We have a, obviously we're going to have a new sheriff soon or next year. You know, let's wait, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Gary Christone, Clark County. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to talk about just law enforcement nationwide, not just Las Vegas. And from my eyes, I see that uh, the biggest crimes in our country, police officers, police officers don't prosecute. For example, when we had the 2008 uh, false flag uh, economic crisis, uh, according to AP and Bloomberg, the bankers stole over $30 trillion from the American people. It was a transfer of wealth from the working class, the middle class, to the very richest people in society. They weren't prosecuted. The Secretary of the Treasury, Hank Paulson, stole, uh, what is it, $100 million from the American people. And when he was asked, who gave you authorization? Uh, oh, nobody did, he said. He said, I gave myself a waiver. Uh, how about all the corporate and Wall Street criminals that have shipped all the jobs that people can support a family on to slave labor countries, such as China? Why aren't they prosecuted? Uh, how, about, how about another one is... Uh, Monsanto, one of the most evil companies in the world, are poisoning our food with GMO food, GMO corn, GMO soy. If you go to any, go to any grocery store, all the packaged food, it'll have corn syrup this, high fruit, uh, corn starch this, soy this, soy that. Uh, what else? How about the fluoride, the poisons that are putting in our water, including here in Clark County? How come no one's being prosecuted for putting poisons in our water? And, uh, one of my favorite shows last I watched, uh, I mean, listened to on Saturday was Coast to Coast AM. It had, uh, the guest was William Scott, the father of the murdered uh, uh, Eric Scott. He was talking, you can play, you go to YouTube and you can bring it up. Just type September 28, 2013, it'll come right up. You can listen to it. He talked about uh, the, uh, the good officers in the Metro that he was, uh, that, that he's communicating with. And, and uh, they said that in their opinion, about 25 to 30 percent of the officers in Metro are rogue cops. A lot of them are kids between, the, he said, this is what the, he said, between 25 and 40 years old who grew up on video games where they're desensitized to killing people. 
he stated that what they said was and the good cops, if they, they, they run into someone with trouble, they would, uh, you know, they would gradually, progressively go from less force to more force. They would bring out the baton. Maybe they would bring out the taser and then shoot someone. But these 30 percent are, are just ready to kill people. So we the people are sick of that. And then the last time I was here, I mentioned that uh, Sheriff Gillespie uh, apparently didn't have an oath of office from whenever he took office in 2000, what was it, 2006 or 7, until April 30th of, uh, of this year. So from a legal standpoint, he was not our sheriff. Sheriff Gillespie was operating under the color of law. I mean, if, that, if that's not true, please correct me, Sheriff Gillespie. Uh, so uh, what else have I got to say? I mean, you commissioners all have children and grandchildren. And, uh, you know, maybe 15, how about 15, 20 years, whenever. If your grandson or granddaughter comes up to you and say, you know, what did you do to stop this police state? We've got to ask you to Hopefully you'll say, I, I, I decided to de-escalate uh, this police state and tyranny. We've got to Thank ask you. you. Did you want Rick Brown. We were here about a month ago on the same topic, and I got up and spoke, and I said that we needed to audit Metro before changing any tax structure. They have money to use. They're not going to fall apart. The sky's not falling, Sheriff. Tomorrow, if you don't have the tax increase, we're not all going to, to perish. The, the, the union man wants everybody to think, you know, and hide the, the money that is there to, to be used. We, we, we have so much waste going on, and I cited three instances before you last month, and somebody said, well, you only found three things? I said, no, I only had two minutes. You know, uh, the sheriff gets up and speaks, and he can speak as long as he desires, I guess, but when you hear from us, we get two minutes, and there's probably a lot more to be said. We need an audit in Metro. We must do something to stop uh, the, the wasteful spending that's going on. And you come to us and want more money. You raised the gas tax last month. You, you, you raised the, the price of water last month. And, you know, come on, where's it going to end, folks? You know? Uh, I don't, I'm not able to go to somebody and say, well, I'm a little bit short this year. I, I need you guys to help me out. No, I have to reevaluate my spending. I have to reevaluate what I do with my money, if I can afford to go to get a hamburger or whatever. But they also are responsible for their money, and they need to live within their means, just like I do, just like you have to. It's time that we audit Metro. It's time that we know what's going on. It's time that there be some, some uh, a, a glass held over the, and so we can see what's going on. Thank you very much. And I'm against this tax. Thank you, sir. My name is Marlene Droz, and I, work, I live in Clark County. And I've heard a lot of uh, impassioned pleas today. And uh, I'm against the tax because I feel everyone on this commission, before they rule on anything, is do a line-by-line -line audit of each. I believe that Metro does have the money. I just believe it's wasteful spending. Now, back in 2008, when the recession was in full swing, there were 2,498 officers on the payroll. Five years later, today in 2013, there are 2,480. That's a difference of 18 officers. I don't believe this tax is going to be spent on more officers. I believe they should tap into the reserve fund uh, and it should be used. That's what it's there for. The taxpayers can no longer afford this burden. We have no more money. Before any tax, we, like the gentleman before, he said, you know, the gas tax, the water tax, NV Energy, we are being taxed to death before any taxes, and that includes property taxes. I think the commission, well, and the state legislature also should be looking at, which might please go uh, on deaf ears, the gaming tax. It's only 6.75%. Why do they get a break? 
There are so many casinos in this town. It's not going to hurt the casino industry to raise that tax 10 percent and to be 10 percent. That would give a lot more revenue to the valley, to the state, where it can go to other uh, police uh, in smaller counties. I mean, they have to look at this. Uh, the money is there. There has to be an audit. Everything is being wasted, and the taxpayers, uh, they need relief. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Richard Lozo, L-O-Z-O. I think that the problem lies in accountability and in accounting, and as one gentleman said, about making sure that the money is used in the right way and in the right places. I agree with the articles that I read from Commissioner Sisolak that he's not approving this, and I can see why. I agree with the article that Susan Brager had about saying she's going to cut it down because Gillespie and uh, not Gillespie, but the Sheriff's Department has a surplus of 100 and $24 million. I get a little disappointed in things that the paper talks about, the radio talks about, TV talks about, because all the facts are either wrong, they're not true, or whatever. March of this last year, it said in the paper here that there were a hundred, almost 200 officers in the Metro Police Department that got over $200,000 a year. Wow! Is that true? If that's true, that figure comes to $30 million. $30 million that the sheriffs got, that the paper says that they got for that one year. Where is the accountability, and whatever are they doing to see, to curb the expenses, and how are these guys getting all of that money? If you took as an average salary for a police officer, and I think of 40 or 50,000, they start at 50,000. All the facts are not put out. They don't tell how many policemen that they have, what the starting salary is, what the, the, what the senior officers get, etc. The money is being put around there, and they have enough money right now to hire over 200 policemen on the surplus that they have. I understand that their budget is about $60 million, but they say, or excuse me, $66 million, and they're only taking in $60 million. There's $6 million in the hole every year. That's what I hear. Well, if there's $6 million in the hole, somebody's got to sit down and say, hey, we got to cut this expense, we got to cut this or cut that to get back down to what's coming in and what we pay. Everybody that's in a house nowadays, if they're getting $3,000 income coming into their house, they can't spend 4000 They have to keep the thing down where it belongs. I believe they have the money there. And I'm really saying to the council, take a good look at it. Don't vote on it today. Put it aside for a while and take a look to see if what I'm telling you is the truth, there's something wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yes, my name is Ed Euling. And even though I raised my hand that I was going to talk, that I wanted to talk, I wasn't serious. But when the man comes up here and says, oh, look at all the problems we have in North Las Vegas, uh, the lack of security we have in North Las Vegas, it was the police department and the fire department who caused the bankruptcy of North Las Vegas. That's what happened. And, and the same thing is going to happen here. We're spending $500 million a year on Metro, and it's not enough to have, uh, to have uh, a public peace. Well, I'm glad the other person mentioned Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. I have some familiarity with Los Angeles County since I started, uh, since I invested in hundreds of homes in, uh, in South Los Angeles uh, in the 70s and 80s. 
And when Daryl Gates became the police commissioner, uh, as if the previous ones weren't bad enough, it became obvious that he was, with his treatment of the people, of the black people and of the, uh, of the Latinos moving into Los Angeles, it was obvious that he was raising the level of anger of the people in, the, in that city. And if, if you go back, that is the cause of the crime in Los Angeles, the high level of crime in Los Angeles. Where, uh, they don't... Uh, they don't help public safety. We're dealing, that's true. The main issue is public safety. Do they create public unsafety or do they create public safety? And when the police department comes in and acts as an occupying army, they create insecurity. They, they don't uh, contribute to public safety. And when, when our department is shooting up, uh, is killing, is, uh, is number three in the whole country in the number of people killed, when our department is, it has police cars all over the place, not for public safety, but to collect money for the government uh, at every corner, uh, th that's not public safety. When our police department is, is, uh, is pulling over mainly uh, uh, minority people and good-looking women and, uh, and young people and throwing them down on the sidewalk and putting handcuffs on them and mistreating them, this raises the level of anger with people. People get angry with this sort of behavior. When, when these kids are being stopped on the street and asked questions and having their picture taken as if they're some kind of criminals, uh, it causes, it causes, it isn't contributing to public safety. It's the opposite. When, uh, in fact, the statistic is any kid that has an interaction with the police department uh, it, it, when he's young, it, it, almost certainly he's going to become a criminal later in his life. I'm Rolando Larras. I am at 820 East Charleston. I own the LasVegasTribune.com and RadioTribune.com. Most of the information that I got here is only hearsay because uh, boss of my organization has been discriminated by Sheriff Gillespie from day one when he took office and I'm not pride to any of that information the other newspapers carry. I have to depend on sources within the police department. But I believe that most of the stuff that are here, you know, like the man that said then uh, Mrs. Dixon would be alive, it would be more cops. If uh, the other guy is complaining about something else, uh, you know, there is nine detectives working in the Police Protective Association making a, a detective salary with almost $200,000 each. They could be out there in the street patrolling the streets. There is nine PIO office, but, uh, uh, a public information officer. You guys don't have nine police, uh, uh, a public information officer, and you are a bigger organization making also a salary. They got 19 executive directors making over $200,000 a year. Probably, you know, like the P, like a PIO, they got a female civilian working as a, giving orders and bossing around professional in police officers with integrity and experience. And you have a civilian that came from Channel 8 to work as a public information officer making $200,000. Those people can be out there in the street patrolling the street. At this time, I will close this portion of the public hearing.